What's up YouTube? It's Mitch Joseph here again with another Joe Speed review. You guys, this morning we're going to be swapping out brake pads. I'm going to show you guys how to change your brake pads. Now, guys, this is not a very hard thing to do. Um, it's actually probably one of the easiest things to do, but you know, besides oil change and air filters and things like that. Um, but I'm going to show you guys exactly how to do it. I'm going to be using my wife's 2015 Chevy Suburban to do it. Um, now, keep in mind this, as far as vehicles with disc brakes, this pretty much works the same way on majority of vehicles that have disc brakes. I would say the large majority of vehicles that have disc brakes this is exactly the way you would change them on any car not just a Chevy or a GM vehicle but any car in general um, some brakes are different Brembo's have a slightly different procedure uh, I'm not sure about Willwood probably the same procedure I don't know but as far as like basic brakes that come on most vehicles this is how you do them so I'm going to show you guys exactly how to do it show you a couple different tips and tricks so you don't have to go through the hard things that I did um, disclaimer I am not a professional I don't do this for a living, but I have done this enough on enough vehicles to know what to do and what not to do. So I'm going to show you guys how I do it. Um, I already did the uh, passenger side. I'm going to be demonstrating the uh, driver side, but it's going to be the exact same procedure on the passenger side. The only thing that's going to be slightly different is usually in the back of the vehicles on most vehicles. Um, the back brakes tend to be a little bit more pesky, um, mainly because you have that park. Uh, that parking brake so for some vehicles I know you have to like disconnect that parking brake line wire to get the rear brakes off um, so maybe down the road when I do need to change the back brakes or uh, back brake pads on the Suburban I'll go ahead and show you guys how to do that but today I'm just gonna show you how to do the front so yeah stay tuned I can't I, also I don't have my tripod I don't know my mini tripod went so um, bear with me on this jankity setup right now <laughs> let's get started Okay guys, so to get us started here, uh, I just got all my tools out, get everything I'm going to need to get us started. Um, first things first, I got my jack here and a couple jack stands. Um, I got a breaker bar there, which is also the part for my jack stand. So um, I got the jack, the jack stands just because I don't really trust a jack. Um, they come down sometimes, so I always recommend using a jack stand. Um, I got a seat clamp here for when we get ready to actually get that brake pads off to get that part loosened because there's a lot of hydraulic fluid, that pressure that keeps it tight. So you're going to need that to take it off, and I'll show you that in a little bit. Um, I also have a three-quarter inch um, socket here that's going to help us take those pads off. Again, this is a 2015 Suburban, and um, I got a little bit of grease here as well, just to when we get in there, and I'll you'll, you'll see exactly how that works. And we actually, you know, obviously have our brake pads there ready to go. So, um, first quick tip, when you're taking the brakes off on the front of a vehicle, usually those wheels are free, you know, so they'll spin by themselves, so don't jack the car up yet. I usually get the jack um, just set underneath the car, and then I'll loosen those bolts before I actually get the wheels up off the ground. Otherwise, when you try to loosen those bolts, the whole wheel will spin. So, first tip, yeah, let's get started. Other quick tip guys, um, usually they're, uh, for vehicles of this model year, there are usually four main points um, on each side where you can set your jack under. Um, that's this flat part here of your jack. If your car doesn't have that, you go for the frame of the vehicle. Yeah, you want to make sure you actually look for the frame to put your jack on. Um, a lot of people, I've seen people put it like right on the plastic or right on their, um, you know, your jack or your um, step. Uh, what do you call it? Whatever these things are called, your step bars. Um, and you, you'll tear your car up doing that nonsense, yeah? So you need to find either the points that are specified for lifting your car up, which are usually um, on newer vehicles, you'll see them, they have like four specific parts on each side. Or you go for the frame rail of the vehicle. Yeah, that's the part, that's that really solid part that runs from the front to the back of the car. So here we go. So I'll just get my jack situated under here. Um, just get us up and under. All I want to do is get it to where, oh, one little torque. Then I'm going to go ahead and get my bolts off. Uh, one thing I learned the hard way was how to um, get the wheels off, bolts off a vehicle. Um, usually they're pretty on, they're on there pretty tight. Um, so a breaker bar, if you're having a tough time with just trying to use, um, you know, you know, I got a tire iron here, but if you're having a tough time just trying to get that off, use a breaker bar, use a little bit of leverage, tuck that in there, boom, and that'll help you get it off. Yeah. All 
All right, so now that I got them loose, I'm gonna go ahead and jack the car up all the way so that we can get this wheel off the floor. Boom. Okay, now you don't have to get it that high off the ground. Obviously, all you needed to do is to get that tire off so you can get a little bit of clearance. And then I'm gonna go ahead and get my jack stands placed underneath here. Um, same, same idea, guys. Make sure you either, um, well, for this part, I put it on the frame rail. Obviously, if you used up you know, the actual designated spot for your jack to go, you don't have another spot to put it. So I'll put my jack stands under the frame rail. So that way, if my jack does give out, um, I use two jack stands. I don't know if you need to, but um, I don't know. What is your head worth to you? What's your hands worth to you? I use two, you're not gonna take my hands. So I go ahead and double up under there, put two jack stands on this side so that if it does fall, it'll hopefully keep it from crushing me. So yeah, boom, let's go ahead and slide those jack stands underneath. So I put one on the uh, back side of the jack, heading you know close to the back of the vehicle. And as you can see, this is my frame rail right here. I'll show how that's coming up. So this thing going all the way back to the vehicle. This is the frame of your vehicle. This is what your, um, you know, this is what pretty much is the skeleton of your car. Ugh. And then I'm gonna put another one here in the front, um, front side of the jack, so closer to the front wheels. And again, all I wanna do is have something there so that if for any reason my jack gives out, that car is not gonna drop its weight on top of my body, it's gonna get caught by those jack stands. Yeah? Okay, so let's keep going. So now that I've loosened those bolts, I went ahead and just um, got my three quarter inch um, uh, socket here on my drill so I can just go ahead and take those off um, loosening it up just just you know quicker to get those taken off right there so I'll go ahead and flip this around bear with me on the camera work here guys it's uh just me one-handed and I like I said I don't know where my tripod is so just go ahead and get those off now you want to make sure that you get your stuff loose first like take them quite a bit of the way off before you go using any kind of power tool because the last thing you want to do is strip the threading on any of this stuff here because that's going to be a pain in the butt when it comes to putting those things back on. So be super careful with that. Um, but yeah, let's go ahead and get this wheel off. I'm going to put some gloves on just because I don't want to get my hands super dirty. Here we go. Um, sometimes, guys, what will happen is you'll notice that wheels will get stuck on the vehicle um, and it's a little tricky to get them off. If you ever run into that, usually what you can do, you can hit one side of the wheel um, and for some reason, I don't know, it just gets stuck onto that rotor. Um, so you can hit like one side of it. I usually have to kick a tire on one side or the other. Yeah, I know I got socks on. Um, uh, one side or the other, and that'll help me pull it off. Um, again, real quick, I'm not a mechanic. I'm a guy in my garage who's done this more dozens and dozens and dozens of times. Um, so yeah, I just woke up, I got socks on, I don't have the proper gear on. I do have like, you know, my over uh, coveralls and all that stuff hanging up over there and I have my boots and everything right there, but I, I don't feel like putting all that stuff on. I recommend that if you're doing it, that you do go ahead and put the proper protection on, but I just woke up. So anyway, that'll get you your wheel off. Let's move on. Boom, take that wheel off. Oops, sorry about that zoom. I'll go ahead and wheel that out of the way. Okay, now that we got that off, I'm gonna get in the car and I'm gonna go ahead and turn my steering wheel all the way over to the right so that it can have um, these bolts a little bit easily, uh, more ex easily accessible for me. Um, so the bolts that I'm going after are gonna be these two back here. Um, one at the top here and two at the bottom here, yeah, yeah. I'm not touching the other two, which are my caliper bracket bolts, which are gonna be this one right here, and the other one um, underneath here, if it's if I'm touching it correctly. Yep, there it is, right there. Those bolts I would take off um, if I was trying to take off the entire caliper, like if I was gonna go ahead and replace my entire caliper, I'd take off those bolts as well. But since we're just taking the brake pads off, switching our brake pads off, I'm just gonna take off these two top bolts here. Boom and boom. Okay, let's get going. Now I can do it with my hands. I don't even need the ratchet at this point. I can just use my hands to take those bolts out. 
Make sure that you put your bolts in a spot where you can easily get them back. So I'm gonna put those right here where I can see them. Now, what you'll notice usually is that this is pretty tight. This won't just come off right away. And that's where your C-clamp is gonna come into play. What you wanna do is you wanna get it in the back here. Let me go ahead and bring it a little bit closer. Bear with me. So you wanna get it on the back end here. First, I'm gonna loosen that up. You wanna get it on the back end. Bada boom. Loosen it, loosen it, loosen it. So I have one part on the back of that rotor, and then the other part here, I have it on the brake pad. And I'm just gonna tighten it, tighten. And all this is doing is it's squeezing that brake down so that you can relieve some of the hydraulic fluid, that brake fluid that's in the lines right now. And when you do that, you squeeze, you push those pistons down. You ever hear when, when people say like they have four piston calipers or six piston calipers? This is me squeezing down to push those pistons back and these are our pistons. So as you can see, there are two pistons right here, and that's what squeezes your brakes, squeezes these pads together. So they come in, one part holds the side, and the pistons just get squeezed together. And then your brake pads will squeeze and slow your rotor down, and that's how you actually brake your vehicle. Uh, or your vehicle braking, braking your vehicle, brakes. You know what I mean. So, these are our old brake pads and as you can see they are all the way worn out uh, there's usually a line let me see if I can grab a newer one for you uh, here it is there's a line usually in your brake pads that'll show you when you need to swap them so when they get all the way down to the bottom of this line usually when you need to swap them as you can see we went way past that we don't even have a line in our brake pads so the wifey is really heavy on that brake pedal so uh, don't tell her I said that um, so let's go ahead and swap that out all right Whew. Okay, hands are dirty. Let me grab a rag real quick. Um, and I just want to walk you guys through one other thing. All right, so real quick, there are some um, metal brackets here. You can see them. This is what our brake pads were sitting on right here. Uh, one and two at the top. Um, these are, think of them like slide rails. So your brake pads are going to be, you know, like I said, those pistons squeeze your brake pads together. And then when you take your foot off the brake, the hydraulic fluids let go and your brake pads loosen up and then you squeeze them and that's how it works. Well, the brake pads are sliding on those rails and that's kind of what helps your brake pads go in and out because they're just sliding on those rails. As you can see, um, like with all vehicles, they tend to rust up and wear out it after a while. Um, I got some brand new ones that came with mine. So what I like to do is I like to swap these out. And then also, when I'm done swapping them out, I like to put some grease on there just to help that even, um, make that even a more smoother slide. So just a little bit of grease. There's um, brake grease. Usually when you walk into AutoZone, um, they're sitting right there on the counter. You can just grab a couple little packets and you just rub them on there and that'll help you even smoother slide. So let's go ahead and swap those out real quick. So these just pop, uh, usually just pop right off. There we go, there we go. And you can kind of see what that looks like there. Drop that down. And then, ooh, bottom one is a little bit harder. For some reason, there it is. Just pop those off. And then I'll go ahead and pop the new ones in. Just go ahead and pop. And they just literally just pop in there. And, uh, where is it? There it is. Pop. A new one in. And just make sure that they're lined up properly so that they sit comfortably in this um, area housing in the brake pads. And then what I'll do usually just to make sure that I did that right, I'll just go ahead and grab one of this and spin it. Just to make sure there's not any scratching or screeching. And we can hear how quiet that is so we know we're not rubbing on anything. Yeah? Cool. So then I'm going to go ahead and grab my grease, which I thought I brought over here, but maybe I didn't. So let me go ahead and grab my grease real quick. Oh, there it is. Um, and I just go ahead, like I said, I have a little bit on the, um, um, you can grab them off of any Meyer or whatever, but I buy the big one just to make sure I have, you know, extra on hand for if I'm changing my brakes. Um, usually my mom will bring her car over for me to change her brakes. My sister, um, my brother knows how to do it now by himself after I taught him, but he used to do it too. So I'll go ahead and just get a little bit of that in there. And not too much, just 
a little bit on the bottom on both sides and then a little bit on the top and again all you want to do is get that rail just a little bit of lubrication so that when it uh, when we get those pads on here it's not gonna um, just be scratching bare metal on metal we'll have a little bit of, of a slick surface to get us going so now that that's done I'm gonna go ahead and grab my new pads using my brand new brake pads as you can see um, I'll go ahead and show you the opposites, the counterparts of these. So old brake pads, new brake pads. So let me grab this camera real quick. As you can see, at the top here we have my new brake pads. You can still see the line in these, clear as day. You can see the thickness in them versus my old brake pads, which you can kind of see the difference here. I mean, there's you know barely anything there if you stand them up side by side. That's what we're looking at right now. So that's awful. Um, so good thing I changed these today because um, obviously this is our family vehicle. The Suburban, the big boy is what everybody hauls in. So yeah, let's go ahead and get that safe. Duh. So uh, boom, let's get this camera back here and go ahead and slide these pads. All the, these slides, just, if you, you can kind of see how this looks. Let me go ahead and bring that camera in just a little bit closer for you. And again, guys, I'm sorry about the, the, you know, all the shakiness in the camera. I'm doing this dolo right now with one hand. So this just slides right in here. You can kind of see that slide rail. And I just slide it in. Boom. And that's that. And then you do the same thing on the back. You just slide it on there. Get it lined up with that rail. And slide it on there. Boom. And that's our new brakes on there. Right? Okay. Now, one other trick. When it comes to your uh, pistons on the calipers, so you notice that if you try to put your brakes on right back the way they are, they're not going to fit. They're too, you know, what you just took off were thin pieces of brake pads, like this thin, and then you put something on that was thicker, like another quarter inch thicker, so, you know, half inch, quarter inch thicker, so it's not going to fit back on here. So, and what you got to do is you got to go ahead and flip that um, piston over and then you're gonna need your c-clamp again so you flip that piston over and then what I'm gonna do is after I flip that piston over I'm gonna take one of the brake pads that I had in there the old ones and I'm just gonna lay it right here lay it right here in that reservoir and then I'm just gonna simply grab my c-clamp put it back here and I'm gonna squeeze those pistons in again so this is a clear you can see these are two pistons one two pistons right here. Let me move that camera, see? Two pistons. I'm gonna squeeze these pistons back down. Um, you can kinda tell where they have that much room here to get pushed all the way back to this wall. So let's go ahead and um, put that down. And I'll put this camera down real quick so I can go ahead and squeeze this in and show you what it looks like when it's done. So the idea is to try and get this as close to the middle of this as you can so that you can push both pistons back at the same time. Otherwise you'll start pushing one piston and the other one will stay there and then you have to come back over and push the other one and so on and so forth. So now that I have these pushed back, I'm just going to take this off, get that all loose for you. And now I'll take this old brake pad out of there, make sure that I flip this the right way and now my brakes. Uh, caliper will fit back on there. Boom. Nice and snug. Then I'm going to take my two bolts that I had earlier. And again, always start with a hand tightening, guys. Don't go to ratcheting stuff down. You'll mess up your threading in a lot of these things. And that's when the real nightmare starts. It becomes a real pain in the butt. So I always just go hand tighten just to get started. Boom, 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 boom. Boom, 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 boom. Flip this over. Then I'll start ratcheting it down because it's hand tightened pretty much where I need it to be. And even the ratcheting, you know, just a decent hand tighten. And then I'll put my uh, breaker on here. Um, not too much pressure, just a little bit of pressure just to make sure that it's really on there tight. So I'll just give it a little bit of torque. Boom, right there. Um, if you have a torque wrench, then you can actually know it. You can look up the actual um, torque specs for your vehicle and know exactly what you know, all these things need to be torqued too, uh, but I just kind of eyeball it. And now that I'm done with that, boom, I can go ahead and get out of there. And I'm going to go ahead and turn my wheel back around um, so I can have it straight lined up with the vehicle and put my tire back on. So let's go ahead and put our wheel back on here. Let me back up a little bit. Excuse me again. I'm going to go ahead and turn that steering wheel. 
turn the vehicle on to the on position, just to the run, and that will help me be able to straighten out my steering wheel. Steering wheel straighten, wheel straight, turn that off. And then I'll go ahead and roll my wheel back in. Sorry about the sniffling too guys. I'm actually really, really sick right now. Um, it's, it's that time of year, flu season, cold season, whatever. Uh, your kids are coming home with all kinds of stuff from school and just so happens that the cold and the flu happens to be, <laughs> happens to be a few of those things that they bring home from school. So, same thing, we follow the same, oh, sorry, let's get closer. We follow the same formula there. We're gonna make sure that we start by just hand tightening. Um, a little trick when it comes to putting your bolts back on your car or on your wheels is to go opposite of um, when you tighten. So I did this one. I'm going to go straight across the opposite here. So this is a six bolt pattern, obviously. Um, it has one, two, three, four, five, six bolts. Um, some cars have five, but the same thing applies. So if it only has five, I'll just go here, here, then I'll pick another one, which is usually here, here, then I'll go here. Yeah. But if it's six, obviously I go here, 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 or you know, here, here. Just make sure that I um, distribute that pressure evenly when I'm putting these bolts back on. So I tighten that one there. Um, then I'm gonna go here, or actually I'm gonna go up here. That's where you wanna go next. And again, guys, hand tighten as much as you can before you go adding power tools. That way we know the threading is going on correctly and you're not gonna have anything stripped out or you know, any threading stripped out because that's that's a bigger pain in the butt than it's worth. So be patient on this part. Like I said, I'm telling you guys from the mistakes that I've learned. And um, yeah, learn from my mistakes, get my experience, boom. So, boom, now I got my wheel back on, my bolts back on, all the way hand tighten as far as I can hand tighten them. Then I'm gonna bring my power tool in. So I'll start at the top, then I'll go to the bottom. And I'll go up to the side, then the opposite side, then the opposite side. Oh, looks like my power tool just died. Of course it died. Why wouldn't it? Well, back to hand tightening, I guess. So I'll go ahead and hand tighten it. And then when I'm done, so this is what I was talking about earlier. If I would have tried to take these wheels off, with with the tire up off the floor, this is what I'd be trying to do. The wheel would just be turning and I wouldn't get anywhere. So um, now that I got that done, I'm gonna go ahead and drop it. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and drop it back down and then use my breaker bar to add that little bit of extra pressure to really torque those bolts back on there. So let's go ahead and drop this car back down. <laughs> under there make sure that there's nothing underneath your car make sure there's no bolts or screws or anything sitting underneath your tire last thing you want to do is put your vehicle back down onto a screw that weighs you know when the vehicle weighs that much it's definitely gonna mess up your tire so everything's clear I loosen it down boom I just slowly release that pull that out from under there and now I'm gonna grab my um, tire iron there and my um, my jack, the bar for my jack. I'll just use it as my breaker bar, so I can go ahead and uh, go ahead and get that wheel, as, go and get those bolts tightened up as much as possible. So let's go ahead and uh, cut two, tighten up those bolts. And the same rules apply, guys. Um, I still go again. I'm gonna go opposite of each one. So I'm gonna start with the top here, just because that's kind of where I started before. I'm just gonna start with the top. I torque it to where I feel like. If, again, if you have a, a torque wrench, then it'll tell you the specs. But I don't have one just quite yet. Maybe this Christmas I might get lucky. Torque there. Then I go up to the side. The opposite side, boom. And I'm gonna go right opposite here. Opposite side, boom. And I'm gonna go over here, because it's the opposite side. Boom, and then I'm gonna go over here. Opposite side, boom. Yeah. 
Now, when you get back in your car, your brakes are gonna be pretty spongy, so you're gonna have to step on that brake pedal a few times. Um, don't just go rolling out into drive because that brake, it's not gonna work right away. So make sure you get back in your car first. You turn it on, you pump the brakes three, four times, should do it enough. And then you go drive around your neighborhood and test the brakes, make sure that everything worked out exactly the way you wanted it to. And that's it. Now you know how to change your brakes. And again, this will apply to most year vehicles. Um, the exception of drum brakes, they have a different procedure. And again, the back brakes tend to be a little bit more involved, um, depending on what kind of car you have, et cetera, et cetera. Like my Chevy Avalanche that I had before, getting those back brakes off, it, it was a pain in the butt. Um, you know, vehicles rust up. There's that factor as well. We are lucky because um, we, this is our, these pair of vehicles that we have now are the newest vehicles that we've ever owned. And so I have been able to do majority of the maintenance on them and make sure I got the upkeep on them and all that jazz. So stuff that's like, that should be taken care of every, you know, to keep the life of your vehicle going, that stuff's not happening because I'm on it versus when we buy used vehicles and people just don't care about their cars and you know stuff that would be easily avoidable uh, are not avoided because people don't do the simple things that they need to do to make sure that their cars will last them a while so um luckily we've been fortunate enough to where i you know i'm greasing up everything and you know oiling up everything like i should so that we can make sure we have good functioning running vehicles getting the checkups and oil changes etc etc air filters cabin air filters things like that um but yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, drive around the neighborhood, give this a little test drive, um, pump my brakes a few times so I can get the hydraulic fluid back in those pistons that we were talking about earlier, and then uh, make sure that uh, the family's safe. Um, that's it, guys. I hope this is helpful for one of you guys. If it is, please go ahead and share the video. Um, you guys have been so awesome with, you know, just liking and sh subscribing. I appreciate that. Um, the more subscriptions we get, the bigger we get. So I appreciate that. If you guys want to go ahead and just hit subscribe, share the video, tell a friend so that maybe they'll subscribe too and help me grow the channel a little bit more. Um, like it. If you don't like it, it is what it is. I appreciate you watching it anyway. Um, yep, I'm in here in socks and shorts. It is what it is. I recommend that you take a safer approach. I'm not a professional mechanic. So yeah. This is Joe Speed Review. Peace.